present. There is a trick to presenting, and I'll just run you through it quickly, it's not just like So, step number one, either or question. Explain these in a second. Either or question. Two. Earn. Earn the right. Screw that. Those are. Either or. Two is thank them, sorry. Thank, congratulate them. Three, earn the right. And if you know absolutely nothing about your subject, Ask a question. Now to start your presentation is what happens with your presentation is most people get an amygdala, amygdala hijack. This is why people think, oh, it's presenting, I think it's, you know, I'd rather die than present. Yeah, probably. Okay. But at the end of the day, you do get an amygdala hijack. There are six um, human emotional needs. That's not Tony Robbins. Has anybody heard of them? What are they? Anyone know? We're not talking Ma Maslow's needs. We're talking no, no Maslow's needs. And there's been an additional need that's been placed under the lowest need for Maslow. Did you realise that? Okay, it's Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> Wi-Fi access. Then. Um, uh, food, food. <laughs> water and air. <laughs> uh, no, not, not Maslow. So, the six human emotional needs. Certainty. Uncertainty. Good. Significance. Love slash connection. Growth. And contribution. Six again, certainty. One, uncertainty. Two, no particular order. Significance. Three, love connection. Four, growth. Five, contribution. Six. So you'll notice that they are three sets of opposites. You need all of these things in your life. You need an element of certainty. You need to know what's going to happen. Wow, that wasn't surprising. So certainty in life is very important. A level of uncertainty is also important. Okay, it wouldn't be good to actually be omniscient and know everything that was going to happen. There'd be no fun in life. Where would the, where would the spice be? So you need to have a level of uncertainty. Significance is about being unique. You are different from the flock. You are different from the tribe. You have an element of, you have a unique proposition. Love connection is the opposite. Instead of being a part of the tribe, you are, sorry, instead of being a part from the tribe, you are a part of the tribe. And it's love connection, not necessarily just love. Okay? Connection is potentially and can potentially be the destructive connection that people can have. The wife continues to hang out with the husband that beats her. You know, the people, the, the criminals and the addicts who continue to thirst after a positive reinforcement for a negative behaviour. Where the more they fail, the more attention they get. Right, so people need that connection. 
Okay, the most effective legal interrogation methods that we had, other than so pentamol and all that sort of stuff, was just isolation. Take people, put them in zip time, drag them off, kneel them in the forest, leave them there. Stand around, just shut up. Nobody ever made it more than 34 hours. You've weed yourself several times, you haven't eaten. The only time you ever know anybody is there is when you try to get off your knees, and then you know somebody's there. But nobody asks you a question. People give up name, rank, serial number generally within about 20 minutes. What? <laughs> really? Yeah. Where's Stephen Jack from Florida? That was Ellen. That's what we were taught to give. That's all you could give anyway. Nobody, so nobody cares. Nobody asked for it. Nobody cares. Right. But then at about, you know, generally about the 18 to 26 hour mark, they just go. And they start with their deepest, darkest secrets. And it's like, you get gaffer tape in your gerbil? I'm really not interested about, you know, the little furry animals and stuff. You know, start with the military stuff. <laughs> Um, <coughs> it is. <laughs> uh, good it's good fun. Don't try this at home. Actually, you can try it at home. There's, there's nothing good. <laughs> can I ask to repeat what is the, the name of these principles? No, no, they're not the principles itself. How do you call it? Six emotional needs. Six emotional human needs. Now, you think about Now, everybody needs these things in a different order. But not, not, the precedence, the importance, the priority of these things, the quantity. Okay. So right now at the moment, in the room, who has the most significance? You do. Me. Because I am apart from the crowd. What? Uncertainty? Probably you guys. I know a bit more about what's happening than you do. Right. Love connection? Probably you guys being at the table. Well, well I get a fair bit, and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, so everything is different, and it takes a little bit of time if you walk into a situation for these things to readjust for you to deal with it. So if you imagine a presentation where you're off stage, so you're about to present the five ways or a six-step seminar or something like that. So you're off stage, you're, in the, you're behind a curtain, you're at the back of the room waiting to come on, somebody's introducing you. Okay. So your certainty is fairly high and you're standing there, you know what you're doing right now, in the right now. Your uncertainty is pretty low, you're sort of listening to the guy that's, that's speaking and about to introduce you and that sort of stuff. Your love connection is zero, okay, because you're hiding behind a curtain, you're in a cupboard, you're at the back of the room. Okay, significance is zero, okay, you're the most insignificant, this is before you get on stage, you're totally insignificant to the whole rest of the room, nobody knows you're there. Growth, normally not. Contribution, zero. So pretty much everything is zero, except, or very low, except, you're certain. So then it's like, oh, welcome to the day Steve Lee. like, ah. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> certainty goes just, okay. Yeah. Uncertainty goes, love connection. It can be 2,500 sets of eyes just going, yep. Okay, that's connection. Okay. Significance goes from nothing to 100%. So these things do an instant shuffle. And that's why people's amygdala just goes... <clears throat> fight, flight. Blood drains from the face, pumps into the major muscles, feel queasy and sick. All of that stuff. Hands sweat, which is just the primal thing. If I need some traction in a second, that's the only reason your palms sweat. Any dog does the same thing. Poor sweat gives you traction. So all the physiological things happen. Version 1.0 kicks in, and now what happens with adrenaline is adrenaline shuts down your frontal cortex, your neocortex, the bit that thinks, the bit that we've been talking about, the big bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the adrenaline pumps the muscles. There's another chemical that shuts down your frontal cortex mm -hmm. and stops you thinking. Because imagine, oh my god, the lion's going to eat me. Well, he's not a very big lion, his mane is there. Now, you don't want to be thinking about that. Mm -hmm. So your brain shuts down the ability to think, and all it kicks in is, okay, you make two decisions, fight or flee. So that's why people go, I've suddenly forgotten my script, and they see Blakely in the audience, or they, they get behind the lectern and mumble and, and do that sort of stuff. <laughs> Anybody familiar with that? Okay, Who, who's okay with presenting? Right, okay. 
Okay, so you're dealing with it. Ah, great, we've got our first example of go coming on. You get a regret back, <laughs> oh. Okay, so what you want to do is to have an automated mechanism that, that helps you get over that, that hump, get over the inertia and create some momentum. Because <coughs> first impressions count, and you've you know, you've been at university or other presentations that sort of, oh, welcome everybody, um, oh, thank you for being here, and they sort of stumble into it. Even if they get better later on, mm -hmm. you're already sort of pretty much half asleep. Yeah. So, this process, number one, ask an either or question. This is an either or question that engages the entire audience. Okay? You can't say, where are my business owners and where are my employees? Because guess what? There's a group of people that's not potentially in that group. Mm -hmm. right. So you've got to pick two questions that are pretty much absolute, as close as you can. <coughs> hands up the guys, hands up the girls. I mean, that's pushing it sometimes these days. Who's <laughs> <laughs> <was> very confused? <laughs> <laughs> We're fancies ago. Are you guys are really really fighting for gender... Not equality, gender not specifying. I'm not specifying my gender anyway, because that would like put me in a box. <laughs> That's okay. Um, whatever. <laughs> so, either or question with hand raising that engages people kinesthetically. Okay, okay, they keep texting with their hands raised. If somebody doesn't raise their hand, you call them on it, you make sure you're getting the participation. Mm -hmm. Wake people up, you get the visual stimulus and you get the kinesthetic stimulus. <clears throat> They can congratulate them. Thanking is good because if I thank you, who is the beneficiary? What? I'm the beneficiary, me. Because I'm thanking you for something. So that's why I also want to congratulate them. So if I congratulate you, who is the beneficiary? You. You're the ones that did something good that are deserving of the congratulations. Earning the right, and then you can get into earn the right. This is tough because you don't say your name till here. What do you normally tell it? Hi everybody, my name's Bob. Yeah. No, it's, you get all the other stuff. And then, as I said, if you know nothing about your subject, you need to ask a question. Um, so, let me give an example of a, you know, the start of, say, a five ways thing for you. Okay, so you're an audience, and I'm the final one. Alright. Okay everybody, where are my business owners? Hands up business owners in the room. Fantastic. Non-business owners. Got any non-business owners? A couple down in the back. Fantastic one here. Guys, welcome. Congratulations. Thank you for coming along this evening. We're going to be learning some really interesting material tonight for the business owners that is going to empower you to create a business that works without you, gives you financial independence, makes your life enjoyable. For the non-business owners, it's going to make you excellent slaves to the business owners that you're working for right now. You're going to realise, though, that you're working for an idiot and go and work for a lunatic and become one of these guys. So, I'm going to help you on your path. Either way, you're going to learn a lot tonight. My name is Steve Leach. Let me give you a little bit of information about how I get to come up here in front of audiences and flap my gums and get paid a heap of money by you guys. Thank you for that. I grew up in Perth in Australia and I uh, joined the military. Found out there that it was fairly easy to sell at the point of a gun. Got into uh, normal industry and business and found it a little bit tougher. See, most people don't understand that the army is a cashless society. I had no concept of money till I left the army. You know, if I need a tooth fixed, I see the army dentist. I don't pay him. He wants something blown up, he asks me, and I blow it up, and he doesn't pay me. So it was really quite challenging to come out of the military after several years and have no idea how the economy actually worked. I was very uncomfortable asking people for money in my first job. So I did what anybody that's unqualified and unemployable does and I started my own business. <laughs> Got into business, I'd observed business all the time, you know, you see how businesses are run and then you give it a go. And seeing how business is run and then trying to operate a business is like coming to Vegas and watching David Copperfield and then trying to emulate his trick without knowing how it's actually done. Okay. And it wasn't working. It had challenges with money. So what eventually happened after a number of years and relatively successful businesses, I joined Action. I learned all about business, I learned the skills of business, so now I help business owners to learn 
the skills of running the business because most of you I'm sure would already know the technical aspects of running a job. Hands up, who knows the technical aspects of running a job? Fantastic, All right, great. So for you guys that do run the job, what is the biggest challenge? For the business owners, what is the biggest challenge that you guys have? Team. Team, great. So I would then start a flip chart. So, that's what I did. I came in and asked an either or question. Now here's how I did it. I came in, business owners, so now I have your attention. Where are my business owners? Now I have your attention, I'm telling you that I'm identifying you, and then I say it a third time. Hands up business owners accompanied by a physical movement that you respond to. Did anybody notice I did it three times? You normally don't. Is what I did? Yes. 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 <laughs> okay, business owners. What are my business owners? Hands up business owners. That's what I did. If you, now, here's what not to do. Okay, business owners, what are my business owners? Hands up business owners? Uh, yes, yeah, sort of, because I don't have the trigger. The trigger is not there. Okay, I need to wait and say, follow my trigger if I'm going to put the hand up. And then you respond. So hands up too early. Or, of course, where are my, where are my business owners in the room? You're not going to do it. Hands up business owners. You're not going to do anything. The visuals aren't going to connect. The kinesthetics aren't going to connect. Maybe you'll get a response from an auditory. That's at most 20% of the audience. But that's not going to be happening. So, either or question, but you come in and you make a statement as you arrive. Then you're thanking and congratulating them. Thanks and congratulations for coming along. The people that you thought needed to be here aren't here, unfortunately. But at least you're here and you're going to get better, whatever it might be. We're going to have some fun tonight, we're going to have some learnings, make a connection with the audience, whatever it might happen to be. Then you've got to earn the right. Now, earning the right, earning the right's up to you. It's up to your individual story, and, and that will come clear with your, uh, um, you know, with your, your affirmations and once you work out who you are and what you're actually doing here. You know, your experiences in life that will contribute to the story and that sort of stuff. That particular earn the right for me is just made up on the spot. Right. And it helps if you just work through chronologically. Right. And then, if you don't know anything, ask a question. I ask a question because it's nice to engage the audience as, as quickly as you can. Okay. So is that, and, and by the time you've done that, then you get to collect your thoughts. You know, you, you get to actually work out your PowerPoint. You, you try and all you need to know is the first slide so that you can segue into the slide effectively, um, and you can you can go from there. Audience participation is, is quite important, and you can pick on individual people, do say and, and do things and that sort of stuff. And so that's how it works. So I give you another example just so that you've got the form of holiday. Um, Right, so somebody pick a subject, any subject you like. The, that I wouldn't know about. Oh, that you wouldn't know about? That you would not know about? No. Okay. Um. Not necessarily. Not <laughs> <laughs> necessarily. Okay, the history of the Dutch and Thieves. Sorry? The history of the Dutch and Thieves. Uh, we've got a few here. Fair So what do you think I'm doing now? Hmm? Setting your, uh, getting your mindset? No, no, I'm just trying to work out what the either or question is. Yeah, get it through the first question. That's going to that's gonna encompass everybody. Who's from the Dutch and Who's not from the Dutch Well, yeah, that, that's it, but, but, but there's another way. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Dutch Antilles people, where are the people who are actually either live there or been there? Hands up, Dutch Antilles, people that have got a first hand experience, fantastic, three of you. Hands up those that have not yet been there and are excited about going, obviously, because you're in the room, three others. So we've got half, half, fantastic. 
Thank you, congratulations for coming along. It's going to be interesting tonight. We're going to learn some great material. For those of you that are residents and are familiar with the group, you're going to be able to help the rest of the group. And you're also, surprisingly, undoubtedly going to find out some nice little secrets that your fellow residents and visitors have come across. I don't know if you're like me, but, you know, I'm from Brisbane, and when you just move into a town, you don't necessarily do the whole tourist thing and can sometimes miss out on the best bits. For those of you that haven't been there, your first experience is going to be absolutely fantastic and you're probably going to end up staying with these guys for months. That one particularly. <laughs> yeah. Staying with him for about eight months, I think. For Marcus is going to get back in every month. Yeah. Yeah. But as long as you bring your own shampoo, you'll be okay. So guys, let me explain a little bit about how I get to stand up here and speak about... Uh, this subject, my name is Steve Leach, I'm an avid traveller, I've spent over 6,000 hours on stage in 14, 15 countries. Um, and I've always found that in travelling, it's nice to know, you know, internet can give you so much information, books can give you outdated information, but it's really nice to be able to talk to somebody that's been there to get all the, uh, get all of the best areas to go that are potentially off the tourist track. I've gotten a lot of trouble in places that I've known nothing about and wished that there were courses like this. And I've gotten into a lot of fun where you can hit the ground and instead of spending days learning, you can actually get straight into your enjoyment. Because sometimes people don't get to go for an entire month on holidays. Okay. Let me ask a question. Let, let me ask the residents first. What is, give me a list, away from the internet, away from the books, give me each your top thing that you've got to do in the Dutch Antilles. Let's start with you, Robert. For the compo. <laughs> Sorry? No, it's not good. Uh, you have to go to the, to the local market to eat. To the local market? Yeah. Exactly. yeah they call it market, but it's actual. Why did you get so good at this? <laughs> okay, so local markets. <laughs> local markets. What am I, like, I know that when I come to the States, leather is good. Leather's good, clothes is good. Okay? Every, every country has its good little bits where you can get a bargain. Okay? So what is it that I should be looking for at the markets? Um, I would say that the local food as an experience, not so much as the bar. Food? Great. Right. This is actually a food market. That's right. So the food markets are best. So if you want to get out of the market. Now, I'm also going to ask you, is there anything I need to be careful of? Am I going to get mud, rock, pickpocketed? Probably. Probably. <laughs> okay. yeah. Leave your stuff. watch though. I'm yeah, market. Leave your watch <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the same market then. <laughs> Especially <laughs> those watches. <laughs> right. Yeah, that has actually happened in the past, I think, in the back of Mexico City going, you know, everybody is looking at me here, yeah, wearing a 20 grand watch in Mexico City and people following is like, I was, I was looking slovenly, but just forgot the watch. <laughs> so be careful, make sure you go out. Okay, we'll do that in the next flip chart, what to actually look out for. Fantastic. Who else? One other residents? There's one here. What's your top thing I need to do? Right, my, I'm, yeah, I'm Sorry, Marcus. <laughs> uh, drink, drink a cocktail at Phoenix 360. Which yeah. cocktail? Uh, anything you want? Ask the bar. Uh, ask the bartender. Fix? Did Fix? you say Fix 360? Hey, Vegas 360. Vegas. Oh, Vegas 360. Yeah. That's the name of the That's the bowl from yeah. bar from Robert. Right. <laughs> Vegas 360. Now, don't get confused, guys, because we're in Vegas. Okay, this is not. Okay, so go and get yourself a cocktail. What are cocktails costing? Uh, it depends. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you got to be 10, 10 and 20, 20 guilders. 10, 20 guilders. Okay, so that'll bring up another point that I'll cover a little bit later on, which is the currency issue. But right now, I want you guys to take two minutes to have a think about and write a list of the favourite cocktails that you're going to put on your list to have as soon as you get to Vegas 360. Okay, you've got five minutes. Go, and then I'll look at my notes for what the hell I'm going to cover next. <laughs> Go to the toilet or get out of town. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. But, but it's, it's just this. Just. Just. Yeah. Okay. Right. Did you practice 